Acts chapter 10, 10 being a number of Gentile. In the Bible, we find that Genesis chapter 10, we find a family of Japheth, Gentile, European, Ham, the African Gentile. And we pick up in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 1. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. There's our character. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. All right, so he's Gentile. A devout man, one that feared God in all his house. That's remarkable. His house with Cornelius. That would include the, assert, the servants. They fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Which gave much alms to the people. He gave to people in need. That had a need. So he feared God, he gave alms, and prayed to God always. Now let me tell you, because I know what I'm talking about. I have 17 years, 18 years, I say 17 because I was a year not in the Catholic Church, and I got saved in 1987 when I was 18 years old, but I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic. And verse 2 is your Catholic. And you cannot say all Catholics are going to hell. Because there are Catholics that do fear the Lord. There are Catholics who give. And there are Catholics who pray to God always. Notice they didn't say pray to Mary. Didn't say anything about worshiping, you know, the one head religious leader. He feared God. He gave and he prayed to God always. But he's lost. And let me tell you, there are saved people in the Catholic Church. But this man, your typical Catholic, he's lost. And saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him. Now, the Catholic Church, some profess to see angels, not all. Some do. They recently in the news, uh, you had a Mary statue crying blood, and th th there's a trick to it. The devil always has his trick to it, but God sends. Now, this is true. This is real. The, the, the Bible has not been written yet, so there has to be signs and wonders. Until the 66 books of the Bible are signed, sealed, and delivered to us. So God sends Cornelius, an angel, that his works got God's attention. Look, coming to him, saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Capital L. Now, an angel of God is not the angel of the Lord. So this, this angel is not Jesus. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. So God acknowledges. So for People who are lost in a religion. If you are surely dedicated to God. Not the religion. 
God. Not the church. God. God puts in memorial of what your activity is. And he's not going to send an angel today. He's going to send a Christian. He's going to put a gospel track. He's going to put scripture. You're going to hear on your radio Christian songs or maybe a Christian message. Somebody's going to invite you to church. You are not going to get an angel. You are going to get a Christian. A Christian witness about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to hear about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And you got a decision to make. Are you going to believe the gospel? And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Or are you going to reject the gospel and put forth your road to hell? Now let's see Nicodemus. I mean Nicodemus. Cornelius, I apologize. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon a tenor, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. No angel, no angel can give you the gospel. Because they don't know the gospel. They're not saved by the gospel. The fact is that there are one third of the angels who, who defy God and go with Lucifer, go with Satan and the devil. Neither any of those angels could repent and get right with God again. So if an angel comes up to you and tells you how to get saved, that's not an angel of God. He's going to tell you, if God were to send an angel... He's going to tell you, go find this Christian. And where that Christian's at. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier to protect him that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all things unto them, he sent them to the So immediately, he gets two servants and a security guard a soldier, to protect the two servants. Because there are robbers and, and there are uh, uh, unfriendly people in the wayside. So protecting these men was a message that this angel said, go get Simon Peter. And we're going to move further. And we're going to pick out Verse number 24. Now, they come with, they find Peter. Verse 24, in the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen, family, and near friends. So not only does Cornelius get his message, it's go get Simon Peter. And Simon Peter is sent for by two servants and a soldier for protection. Meanwhile, Cornelius has called his family. He has called his friends. Because he wants them to hear what Simon Peter has to say. The message of God through a man. It's quite interesting. It would be like you're you're lost, and and you go to a church, and you say to the pastor, "I want somebody to meet with me. I want somebody to tell me what's going on." 
and he sets up an appointment at your house Saturday, five o'clock. And when the pastor sends somebody from the church to the house at five o'clock, they go into the house, and here's all these people. They're the family. They're the friends. They're the co-workers of that person saying, we want to all to hear about the gospel. Right, frankly, in 2023, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but very highly likely it's going to happen. Peter walks into this Cornelius' house and here's all these people. And tomorrow, when they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them and called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. Now, let's break for a minute. In the Catholic Church, Peter is believed to be the first pope. And whatever pope it is, I don't know what his name is. But all the popes follow the line in the ordinate, ord, ordination, the anointing from Simon Peter. This is what the Catholic Church believes. It's hogwash, but that's what they believe. So here is this man likened to a Catholic. He, he, he fears God. He prays. He gives money. He's a good man. Look, here comes, let me just say for a moment, I don't believe this, but here comes the Pope. And Cornelius falls down and worships him. Friend, in 2023, this happens with the Pope. This happens with, with the bishops. This happens with the priest. You fall down and, and bow yourself before the priest, the, the bishops, and the Pope. In the Catholic Church. And not only do you fall down and say hello, but you worship them. I was one time in the house, my wife was in the hospital, I was in the elevator, and there was two women and myself and a man that had his shirt on backwards, a, a, a priest, walks in and they said, Hello, Father, hello, Father. And I said, Hi, sir. And one woman said, That's a priest. The, 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 don't you honor his position? I said, no. I said, do you know who I am? Because they go, no. I said, I'm a preacher. And I was. I don't look for you to honor me. And the Bible says, call no man your father. And they got upset with me. I got off my floor and they went, whatever they went. This man follows the Catholic Church. Here is his man. He falls down and worships him. That's what they watch with the watch the Catholics with the Pope. Watch the Catholics with the priest. But Peter took him up, saying, "Stand up! I myself also am a man." I can see the Pope not doing that. Peter says, "Man, get up! I ain't. Don't worship me." Worship God. Worship Jesus. You will never see a Pope do that. So that to your Catholic. Show your, show your Catholic friend verse 25 and show him verse 26. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Many. Boy, this wasn't an act of Peter, and I believe he had three men with him. Two or three men Peter called with him. This is Cornelius. He's not saved. He's a Gentile dog. Even Peter right now, as a Jewish man, God, I ain't going over there. What are you, 
We're not supposed to. The law says I'm not. We're not to hang out with the Gentiles. Yeah, right. Peter walks into this Gentile Italian house and he smells sausages and there's a dog running around and and for a Jew that's ew, filthy, unclean. Not in the eyes of God. We'll move on. And he said to him, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man as a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation, Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call any man uncommon or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, Don't pay me. <laughs> Tell that to your priest. They want you to pay for everything. As soon as I'm sent for, I ask, therefore, what intent ye have sent me? So Peter says, listen, I ain't here for money. The law says I'm not supposed to be here. Well, not really, but. So why did you call, call me, Cornelius? Why are all these people here? And Cornelius he said, four days ago, I was fasting. All right, that's one more thing. He's fasting. Catholics fast. <laughs> Not even Baptists fast. Not even Baptists fear God. Not even Baptists give alms. Not all Baptists pray. Cornelius was in his house. Man, this Catholic, before the Catholic Church started, is more sane than your Christian today. The ninth hour I prayed in my house, so he's fasting and praying, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Well, wait a minute. Look at verse 3. I saw a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God. And he says, a man. Angels are never females. Angels never have wings, as the Catholic Church will portray them. The Catholic Church is outside the words of the Bible. The Catholic Church has come up with their own fairy tales of religion. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. So God does hear the prayers of the lost. If they are seeking, if they fear God. Now, if you're an actor and actress and you're on the screen and, and you pray that's in the script, God don't hear that. If you don't believe who God is and you pray for something for a child, for you, for your family, God don't hear that. Cornelius was seeking and fearing God. And we don't know what his prayer is. Maybe his prayer is, Lord, God, I want to do right. Show me the way. I don't know. That case, God is obligated. Obligated. I can't say that. To send somebody to that man, Cornelius, or anybody else who prays to God and said, Lord, I want to know, show me, what do I do? I find it funny that I've been told by a missionary in Mongolia where there's a desert, and in the middle of a desert, a man is walking and he finds a Bible. And he picks up and starts reading in the Bible. And then where he goes, he finds the missionary in Mongolia. And then he gets saved. Uh, 
If a man in Korea, North Korea, where they will not allow the Bible, they will not allow a preacher into Korea. And if he's in the realm of the Korean and maybe in the army or whatever it would have to be, if that Korean prays to God and fears God and seeks God and prays in the Korean language, God, I want you. I want to know what's right. God is going to get the channel of someone or some way for that man to get the gospel so he can hear about Jesus. I prayed to God, even the Catholic Church. I, I, I didn't see the Mary. I didn't see the statues. I didn't see any of that. I didn't see the Pope and and I had questions of what was going on in the Catholic Church, but I would pray to God. I would seek God and things of my heart. And and then my grandma came to me and says, we found this church. And I was like, I know. We found this church. No, 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 no. I found this church. No, no. And if only one day my grandma came to me, you know, there's this church. And I, I said, listen, I will go to your church. If after that, you never again mention your church. She's like, all right. So she picked me up, went to church. Like Monday or Tuesday, I called her up. I said, I, you, I don't know what's going on. I feel something. She called the church, and they met me in April on a Saturday. And they talked with me, and I knelt down, and I, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I didn't know I had a need for Jesus. I was praying. And God answered my prayer by showing me Jesus. Praise the Lord. He says, thy prayer is heard. Thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. So giving money as a Christian. And a man that fears God and a man that is praying God and a man that is seeking God and a man that is fasting to God and a man that is absent of God, looking to God for, for the answers. Your offerings are a remembrance to God in heaven. God's taking track of what you give. Money and time. David, I believe David said in the psalm, you put my tears in a bottle. Wouldn't it be interesting when we get to heaven, there's a bottle and has all our tears. Send forth the Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged in the house of Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Okay. So immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou hast art come. Uh, I can't see that word because I marked my Bible. What's that word? Now, therefore, am I, therefore, are we, as everybody's invited, are all present before God. Look at that. We didn't show up. It says he invited his friends and his kinsmen. We're not here for you, Peter. <laughs> wow, that's a typical. That's a, not a typical Catholic. Again, if Peter was the first pope and he's not, here he comes. Listen, we are in the audience of God, not you, Peter. For the Roman Catholic Church, when when the pope is there, you are in front of God. Nonsense. Cornelius says, we are here, and God is here, and he's lost, and his kinsmen and his friends are lost, but God is here. When I was in my grandma's living room, April 1987, and, and the Bible was open, and they were showing me the way of salvation, God was there, and Jesus was there. 
And the moment I received Jesus Christ on my knees at the, at the coffee table, the Holy Spirit came in me and will never leave me. And God was there. Where two or three are gathered together, there was Joe Caswell and Joe Whitmore and my grandmother who was saved and my brother who was saved there. God was there. And I put my trust in Jesus Christ. I left the Catholic religion. And I got the way, the truth, and the life. Present before God is here all things that are commanded thee of God. Now, now you ain't going to find no Pope, but they're saying, Peter, what God, what God has for you to say, we are here before God to hear the word of God. You're not going to hear that in the Catholic Church. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of truth, I perceive that God is not a respecter of person. He's dealing with a Gentile, a non-Jewish person. Even Peter is shocked. But in every nation, he that feareth him, chapter 10, verse 2, and worketh righteousness, Verse 2, verse 30, is accepted with him. Okay, I'm, let's say a Mormon. The Mormon religion is the way of hell. Okay? If there is someone in the Mormon religion, and they fear God, and they do things for God, because they fear him. Not doing things to be saved, but things to please God. I don't know what age I was. I had a friend named Kevin. I don't know where we got this idea from, but we would take earthworms and we would cut them open and sacrifice them to God. I don't know where I got that from. You say that was food. No, I would take a earthworm. I will cut him open with a with a can top, and it'd be the blood and guts. And I would say, God, this is yours. And I look back today, and I was many many years before I got saved. God would look at those earthworms and say, You truly gave that for me. You prayed to me. You had a fear of me. You know what? A lot of my prayers, I prayed as a child, lost, going to hell. You know, in my Christian life, God answered those prayers. Don't tell me God doesn't hear the prayer of a law. Now listen, if you are evil and you are wicked and you have no sense of God at all, you truly defile God, he's not going to hear your prayers. There are people out there lost and they're doing whatever they think that God be right, not as a religion, not for salvation, but God, look at me. God, take heed to me. God, I want to know. That's what Cornelius did. And probably his friends and family that showed up. And Cornelius says, we are in the presence of God and Peter, you have the words of God speak. No religion, no pope, 
no Catholic, no Baptist church, just the presence of God and the word of God. And I'm not bothering with that angel who's just a man. Verse 30. Cornelius has the, 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 the background of a Catholic, but he, he, he's everything but a Catholic. Accepted in him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, that's John 1.1. 1, 1. Is John 1.1 1, 1 complete? Is it right? And this, this is before John wrote. Yes. This is 1 John 1. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ is the Lord, capital L, of all. That word, I say, ye know. Peter's talking, he says, the word, you know it. Well, how do they have the word? There is no New Testament. Cornelius has been studying or reading parts of the Old Testament. So don't blame me. Go back to Acts chapter 8. Look at here. Verse 27, Ethiopian. 28 was returning and sitting in his chariot and read the Isaiah's the prophet. And verse 37, And Philip said unto him, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Ethiopian eunuch got saved. And all he had was Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Peter says, you know the word. Cornelius has heard maybe the testimony of the life of Jesus, maybe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Maybe as a centurion, maybe he was a centurion, one of the centurions around Jesus. Or here we are in chapter 10, maybe it was a satirian involving in the imprisonment of the apostles and Christians. But he says, that word I say ye know, which was published throughout Judea. So the life, the death, and the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus has gotten all around Judea. Cornelius, you've heard it. That word that's going around about Jesus, the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus has come to Cornelius, and Cornelius fears God by what he's heard about Jesus. And began in Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Do you remember Simon the sorcerer? He wanted the Holy Ghost. He wanted power. Here's it shows up in the life of People want to say Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Cornelius. But this is speaking about Jesus. Who went about doing good and healing all that was press of the devil. For God was with him. Jesus. Now you definitely heard about this. This is not. How many people that Jesus healed. And would you somewhere you had to say. Hey. Fred. You're walking. Yeah. What happened? I met this man, Jesus, 
And he healed me. Samuel. Hey, that's a that's a weird yellow tie you got. How do you know I'm wearing a yellow tie? You're blind. Oh, no, no, no more. This man, Jesus. All the people that were healed, all the people that, that come with Jesus are out there telling others what happened. And a lot of times Jesus say, tell no man. They go off telling everybody. This is how Cornelius knows the word. The testimony. By people witnessing what Jesus done to him. That's why, Christian, you need to get out there and tell people what Jesus done for you. Because people are listening. And maybe somebody will get saved. And we, the disciples, the apostles, are as witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews... And in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree, okay? Him the Lord raised up the third day and showed him openly. There's the gospel. He is telling Cornelius the gospel. He's telling the family of Cornelius the gospel. He's telling the friends of Cornelius the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 11, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, the gospel. Peter did not have a fellowship. Peter did not have a movie night. Peter did not have a choir thing. Peter did not have special music. Peter did not have a BBS. Peter did not have a bus ministry. Peter had the word of God that he walked to this man's house or took a camel or a horse. And he preached Jesus. Now go back to chapter 8 again. Chapter 8, Philip. Look at 35, 835. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same prophet and preached unto him Jesus. And that Ethiopian eunuch got saved. Peter is preaching Jesus. Him the Lord raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people. Not unto witnesses. I, I marked my Bible. Now I can't see it. Chosen before God. Even to us. Who did eat and drink with him. After he rose from the dead. So he's alive. Peter said. He commanded us to preach unto the people. To testify that it is he. Which was ordained of God. Jesus. To be the judge, capital J, of the quick and dead. To him gave all the prophets witness through the name whosoever believeth to him, in him, shall receive remissions of sin. Hey, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved. And while Peter yet spanked these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Everybody in that house got saved and they of the circumcision the Jews which believed were astonished what is going on here those people the Gentiles as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of the Holy Ghost 
The, Jesus is the gift of God. The Holy Ghost is the gift of God. The Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Ghost, and they're both God. And God is both Jesus, and God is both the Holy Ghost. I don't care what the, what the Jehovah Witnesses say. That is the gift of God. The day and the moment I got saved, I received the gift of God through Jesus Christ, eternal life, and I also got the gift of God, the Holy Ghost, that dwelt in me. I can never remember the date, but it was in April, a Saturday afternoon in 1987. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answer Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have, be, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And they commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain day. So the baptism came after salvation. So a man that feared God gave alms, prayed, and fasted. And seen angels was not saved until after the preaching of the gospel. And they were not baptized until after they believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look how simple the Bible lays it out. When was the last time you heard in, in your church the message of the man named Cornelius. 